After Cyclone Yazi in 2011, community members like Joe Peterson were shocked into action after witnessing dead and dying turtles washing ashore. The seagrass collapsed and turtles, green turtles especially, uh, started dying in really, really high numbers like we'd never seen before. So basically a group of us got together when we had all these sick turtles and we had nothing that we could do with them and we decided that we'd um, mobilise and take some action and Magnetic Island Network for Turtles was formed. The Turtle Rehabilitation Facility on Magnetic Island was set up as a backup to other facilities that were already struggling to cope with the increasing numbers of stranded turtles. We were just getting hammered. It was one every day and it, we just didn't, we'd never seen numbers like that before. Reef HQ was full. JCU had set up a temporary facility to house them as well. They were full. They had nowhere else to go. Today, the Turtle Rehabilitation Facility on Magnetic Island is permanently established, releasing healthy marine turtles back into the wild. It's really, really good feeling to sort of get it back out there. It's just good to be able to, to get it back where it should be. We've had four from our first year that did get released, albeit with, with big help from JCU and, and Reef HQ. In response to this growing community desire to protect turtles, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority and Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service have trained a new army of volunteers from different locations along the coast to respond to animals in distress. They go out there and they're on the water, they're walking the beaches, so they're the people that notice things. So once you give them the training for how to respond to a marine stranding, they become part of our extended network. It's just, it's a win-win situation for everyone. It's really important for community members to know what to do in a situation like this and it's really great that everyone can be a volunteer to upskill and get the knowledge that's required to be able to respond to finding a sick or injured turtle on the beach. In responding to cases of stranded turtles, volunteers are also collecting valuable information about these animals. And the work that the volunteers are doing feeds directly into the Queensland-wide marine stranding program. So this is a program established in 1996 um, and is one of our most critical management tools for understanding what's impacting on our marine species. During their training, community volunteers learn practical skills on how to respond to turtle strandings. We've learned heaps of new skills, especially in what to do when you first find a turtle. So how to fill out your report forms, what number to call and, uh, and what steps to take. Anyone who comes across a stranded turtle should call the Marine Strandings Hotline.